So in this video, we're going to go through three different parts um, of interpreting MATLAB code. So the first part A here is looking at matrices. So from the MATLAB code below, what do matrices A, B and C actually look like? So if we start with A, I think this one should be the easy one, because uh, all we've got to do is kind of read this back into a normal looking matrix. So we've got one, four and five. Remember that these just go across in a row until we reach uh, the semicolon, which tells us to go to a new line. So that means that the two is going to come down and we keep going across until we hit another semicolon, which is going to tell us to go to another new line. All right, so that's what matrix A is going to end up looking like. So if we now move on to matrix B, okay, we can see that it's going to be reading out part of matrix A. And what we need to remember is when we refer to a matrix, uh, it's always in the order of row, comma, column. Okay, so this is saying go to matrix A, and this is the row reference, and this is the column reference. So the column reference is really easy. That's saying go to the third column. We need to remember that this dot dot thing, um, the colon, that's telling us to take all of them. Okay, so in this case, we're going to go to the third column, okay, and we're going to take all of the rows. So we would return 5, 0, 2 for this matrix. All right, so then for C, again, it's quite similar to the one above because we're going to look in matrix A and we're going to read out here, this is telling us to go to the second row. And this now here is our column reference. It's telling us to take the first and the second columns. So looking at A here, all right, we're looking at the second row and we want the first and second columns. So it's going to be the two and the negative one that get pulled out. Okay, so that would be our answer um, for all of the matrices we were asked in that part. All right, so let's go down now to the next one. So we're asked, what does the vector D look like after running the below code? So we can see that a matrix E is defined, all right? It's got four elements in it. And then we're going to run through a for loop. I here is our count variable. We're told to start at one and run up until we reach the length of E. So the length of E is just going to be how many elements are appearing in here. So. I would suggest that that would be just equal to four, okay, since we have four elements. So once we've um, got that worked out, we're going to go from one to four. We're going to make a new matrix D and we're going to write to the ith um, element inside it. So if i starts as being equal to one, that means we're going to write to the first element of our D matrix. And I'll pop that over here, we'll fill in the final thing. So the first element here. We're going to look to the E matrix and take the first element of it, okay, so E1, plus we add on I, and remember for the first time through the loop, I is equal to 1. So if we substitute in here, the first element in E is going to be 3, so it's 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So that's what goes in the first element of our D matrix. All right, so we reach the end of our loop. So we go back and go, okay, we increment to the next value, which is i is going to be equal to two. So we go down here, we're looking in the D matrix and we're writing to the second element of it since i is now equal to two. And it's going to be equal to the second element in E plus i is still equal to two, so plus two. So if we go look up here, the second element in E is four. So 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, okay? So that gets written to our second element up here. All right, so we reach the end of our loop, so we go back up and we increment to the next i. So that would be that i is now equal to 3. So now we're looking at writing to the third element of d. It's going to be drawing out the third element of e plus our i value, which is 3. So looking at the third element here, it would be 9. So 9 plus 3 is going to take us to 12. So that's our third element. All right, again, we reach the end. So we go back and increment, and we're up to 4, okay? And that's the length of E. So this is the last time we go through the loop. So I'll come over here and keep going. So we're looking at writing to the fourth element of our D matrix. We want to read out the fourth element 
of e and add 4 onto it since i is 4. So this is going to be the 8 plus 4 which takes us to 12. So the last element here would be 12. So that there is the matrix D that would fall out of the code. All right, so let's move on to the last one here, which is looking at like an if um, command. So consider the MATLAB function below, which takes a scalar input X and returns a scalar output F. What would be the output of this function when we have uh, three different inputs for that X? Okay, so it's a function, it's outputting F, and the only input is this X. So let's start with the first one, which is X is equal to zero. So coming down, we meet this if function, and it says if x is directly equal to 0, which, okay, we've definitely got, then we're going to do this. So we're going to do f is equal to x plus 1. Okay, so we've definitely met this, so we're, we're executing that line. So x is 0 plus 1. All right, so f is going to be set to 1. Okay, it doesn't matter what any of this is because we met this first thing, so we reached the end of the code, this is what's going to be outputted uh, back up in F. Alright, let's do the next one, which is X is equal to 3. So we come in, alright, if X is equal to 0, do this. Well, we didn't really meet that, it's not true. So we move on to the next thing. So else if X is greater than 3, do this. Well, at the moment, we have x is equal to 3, all right? But you can see here, 3 is not greater than 3, all right? If you had the greater than or equal to symbol, um, then it would be. But since we don't, all right, we're not meeting this one either. It's false. So that means we move on to the next bit, which is an else statement. So anything else, we're going to be doing this. So that's us. So f is going to be equal to x minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2. So that's what would be outputted from this code. All right, the last one. All right, part 3. We've got x is equal to 4. So we come in, we see this if command, and we say, okay, x is not equal to 0, so we're going to keep going. We have this else if. This time we have 4 is greater than 3. So this is going to be true. So that means we now execute this line here. So f is going to be equal to x squared. So 4 squared, which is 16. So that's what would be outputted for that line. So that's all there is uh, in terms of this video of our interpreting our MATLAB codes. And I'll see you in another one.